Before we get started today, this video will show you how to restore your OnePlus 7T to Oxygen OS. A word of warning before we get started, do not do this or any other flashing steps with custom operating systems like Lineage OS or any of the AOSP projects if you are not willing to lose your device. All of the steps in this video will wipe your phone, so make sure to keep good backups of all of your files, make sure to take all of your images or anything important you have on your phone and store them in a safe place so that you still have access to them after this whole process. Now let's get into it. Hi everyone. Today we are revisiting our OnePlus 7T. I've been doing some experimentation on this phone right in front of you right now to work on moving to a more up-to-date version of Android, Android 11. And I've attempted to install Lineage OS 17.1. Unfortunately, even with the SIM card installed, I'm getting no SIM card bound, no service, no 4G, and so it's not working out for me. In the experimentation, I actually bricked this phone pretty hard, and I'll splice in an image that will be kind of out of focus just because Windows has been giving me a hard time with my Logitech drivers, where it shows the bricked screen on this phone. You will notice for this process, what we need is a version of an obscure operating system known as Windows 10. And of course your OnePlus 7T device, which is in front of you right here. And you will also need the MSM restore tool, which I already have downloaded on this computer. This is for Hot Dog T, which is Hot Dog B, the OnePlus 7T, but for T-Mobile edition, because I have a T-Mobile phone. If you have an international version of the phone, then you will need the Hot Dog B International. And I'll post both links to these in the description down below so that you can go to the one that's relevant to you and download it. Very, very first thing, you'll want to plug the phone into your computer with USB. And then you're going to go to Windows Update. Under here, you'll click View Additional Updates and then Driver Updates. And then you will click on the Qualcomm one, Download and Install. This will install the drivers that we need for the rest of this process to work. In this area right here, we can see that I have MSM tool downloaded and I also have it unzipped. It takes a while because the file is relatively large. You can see that this file right here is over five gigs. Compressed, it comes down to just under three gigs. For the MSM tool to work, you have to first get your phone into EDL mode. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we're going to start this phone up and we will shut down completely. Now that the phone is off, we will have our USB connector connected to this Windows PC. And we are going to hold the volume buttons both up and down and while we're holding those down we will plug this USB cable in. When you do this make sure you do not hit the power key. If you hit the power key you will either go into fast boot mode or you will go into the bootloader and we don't want to do that. Right now we are trying to get into EDL mode so you only want to hit the power up and power down keys and you will see this phone show up on the MSM tool. Clearly I screwed that up. I must have hit the power button. So we'll power off again. All right, so holding the volume up, volume down keys. We'll now plug in the phone. 
and you can see that the MSM tool recognizes the phone, but because we're not going through and clicking the keys that we need to, it's going to time out and boot back up again. Now that you see what happens if you miss your time window with EDL mode, we have the phone again completely shut off. I'm going to hold down the power up, power down buttons, plug it in. We see that the phone is recognized, so we will change target to T-Mobile, click Enum, click the device, and then click Start. And we can see that it's going right now, and this will restore the phone completely to Android 10. In this case, it will be OnePlus's Oxygen OS version 10. I went on a trip to Austin with some friends with the G7 Power, and it was really handy having two days of battery life without recharging. With that said, this OnePlus phone is much nicer. It's a faster phone. It's just cleaner. It looks better. It actually feels a little bit better because it's got a little bit more heft to it, but for the purposes of vacation, I really liked having that 5,000 milliamp hour battery. I'm hoping to get back to using this OnePlus 7T as my daily driver though. And since Lineage OS didn't recognize my SIM, maybe I did something wrong in the setup, but I w will be looking into other ROMs for this phone that are based on Android 11, something that's a little bit more up to date because I think that Android 11 will have more security patches moving forward. Android 10, I think, is going to start having its security updates kind of tapering off. There is a new version of Lineage OS that is in XDA forums that I am going to be looking into. If I have the same problems, I won't post a video on how to install that version of Lineage OS. It's designed to have Micro-G spoofing which is really cool. That is more similar with this phone to what a lot of people will talk about with Calyx OS, where there's spoofing built in and Micro-G is integrated into the operating system in such a way that it operates more like Google Apps. I'm really excited to see what goes on with that version of Lineage OS. It looks like a former developer kind of started doing his own homebrew. So if that works, I do plan on supporting the work on that operating system because it's up to date and he's doing a lot of work on it. And it just, it looks like something really cool. It's something equivalent to Calyx OS for the OnePlus 7T. We can see that the time on the phone is nearing 200 seconds. From my experience, it takes about 200 seconds to totally flash the phone back to stock. And you can do this really from a bricked state on the phone. You can do it from Lineage OS. You can even restore the phone to stock using the MSM tool from just stock Android. And this is necessary because you can't really flash a an Android 10 custom ROM up to Android 11. So you can't go like lineage 17.1 to 18.1 because Android 10 and Android 11 are not compatible. You need to switch back from stock Oxygen OS, update the phone to Android 11, and then you will be able to flash over to whatever version of Android 11 a AOSP that you want. In my case, that will be Lineage OS 18.1, assuming that flashing process is successful. And I will be recording that so that if it is successful, you will be immediately able to, or very quickly able to go in and replicate my steps. We can see that the process is complete. So we're doing our first time setup. This T-Mobile screen hangs for a bit, so I think I'm going to pause the video right here.
and show you that everything's been restored to Android 10. All right, we've made it back to the startup screen. From here, we can just go through the setup process. If you don't want to give Google any of your information, or if you want to keep that information as minimal as possible, you can. As you go through this, you don't have to actually sign in with any actual information, although Google will pick up your local Wi-Fi if you're doing this at home. But with that said about masking your personal information from Google, I'm just going to wrap up doing the first time setup on this device. And that will basically do it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Thanks for stopping by. This is Nick, signing out.